Hello, Uncle Ted, your ice cream alchemist with ice cream every day. This is brown sugar and honey pumpkin with peanut caramel, and it came out amazing. This was great, great ice cream flavor. Uh, please hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Now would be a great time. Thank you for all those who have. I broke 500, so I'm really happy about that. Now, for the caramel, this starts off like the other caramels that I've done in previous videos. I stole the recipe from uh, T. Boone. I'm going to link it in the comments. He's a wonderful guy. got a great show. And this is by far the easiest recipe to follow. It's Ted Proof, which should tell you something, because I thought I had ruined it. Uh, I thought for sure I had made a horrible mistake because my pan was too small and I added too much butter. It was originally supposed to be pralines, but I added too much butter fat and it turned into caramel and the caramel was wonderful. But I'm going to post the recipe. Go ahead and follow it. Very simple to follow and it made some great, great caramel. Um, now, I had regular uh, sea salt ro dry roasted peanuts and two cups is what I used. I threw two cups in there. I didn't chop them up any further. Uh, they were already, you know, in pieces, so why not? But by all means, if you're in the in the mood to make some caramel, this is the way to go about doing it. Uh, this just came out so good, and honestly, I'm going to do it again. Now, uh, on the parchment paper that I used on my baking sheet, I did give that a coat in butter. Um, I should have put more on there. I should have made that coating extra thick. This is some seriously sticky caramel. It stuck to everything. I had to put butter on everything that it touched. Otherwise, I'd have a mess in my hands. It's that sticky. But look at that color. Oh my, oh my. This was good stuff. Once it was ready and I poured it out onto my parchment paper, I just smoothed it out a little bit and then I left it to cool. Uh, this stuff is extremely hot. Be very careful. Trust me when I tell you that melted sugar hurts when it contacts can. I, I've got scars, but they're ugly, and I'm not. This isn't that kind of a video channel. But trust me when I say be very, very careful. Now for the pumpkin, you know somebody had uh, got given me a pumpkin, and I went ahead and chopped it up, seeded it, and roasted it in the oven at 350, and this took me about 45 minutes. So. I went ahead and let it cool, and after it cooled, I separated the flesh from the skin, and it came off very easily. It was just wonderful stuff. But this pumpkin was pretty good. I actually had several ice cream flavors made out of it. Um, trust me, it's better to roast your own pumpkin. That stuff from the can is too squashy, and I don't like squashy flavor. I like pumpkin flavor, and I wanted pumpkin to come out in this ice cream. So... Once I, I had all those pieces chopped up, then I went ahead and added a couple tablespoons of butter to my pan. And once those were melted, then I added my pumpkin and got that cooked down. Uh, once it started to get properly warmed up, that's when I broke out the tater masher. I use that tater masher for making ice cream more than I do mashed potatoes. Um, seriously, I think I've made mashed potatoes with it a handful of times but I've used it for ice cream more times than I can count. Now, for brown sugar, I used a third of a cup, and then for honey, uh, I had about a quarter of a cup of honey left, and so I just went ahead and used it up in this. So that's why there's a mixture of brown sugar and honey, and it really had a great flavor because the combinations of the two, you know, they weren't overbearing because I didn't put a ton of sugar on there, and this way I was actually able to taste the pumpkin. You know, the rest of this ice cream is pretty straightforward because you've seen me do these before. Um, I had uh, four egg yolks, and I went ahead and I mixed that with half a cup of sugar. Now, keep in mind that I didn't want to have too much sugar in this. I didn't want that sweetness. I wanted the real pumpkin flavor to come out, and that's important. That's why I didn't spice it up that much. I didn't put a ton of pumpkin spices with it just because I wanted to actually taste the pumpkin. Now I did add a couple teaspoons of cinnamon because you just want a little bit of a hint of it and it goes so well with it, but I just didn't want to overpower that pumpkin flavor. Now, as usual, two cups heavy cream, one cup of the uh, you know whole milk. Took me a while to get that one spit out, but finally did. And so 
two cups heavy cream, one cup of whole milk, half a cup of the non-fat dry milk, as well as eighth of a teaspoon of guar gum, and I used half a teaspoon of vanilla after I pulled it off the heat. Just like usual, um, really this is uh, nothing that you haven't seen before. Once I get it done, then I go ahead and temper the eggs. You don't want the milk boiling hot, but you do want it hot. So then I start tempering the eggs by adding a little bit to my bowl, keeping that mixture going, and bit by bit I bring those eggs up to temperature so that I'm cook getting them heated up without scrambling them because nobody wants scrambled eggs in their ice cream. And that process of tempering is something that I've gotten pretty good at. Um, unfortunately, I just don't seem to be able to get a good camera angle to show you how it's done. But I think you can figure it out this way. You know, I, I just added bit by bit at a time. Obviously, I try not to make a mess, but, you know, what can I say? Once I've got everything tempered, then everybody back in the pool, I put everything back on the heat, and I whisk constantly. Trust me, once you have this uh, egg mixture and on the stove, you want to keep whisking it and don't ever stop because it will stick and it will give you a nightmare. Um, now, what we want to do is we want to get this up to 165 degrees and hold it there for 60 seconds to kill off all the cooties. You can also do the back of the spoon test and make sure it's thick enough to coat the back of a spoon. That's the other way. And then you want to strain it out to make sure that there's no bits of scrambled egg that you missed. I'm actually getting good at this so that I don't have any bits of pieces uh, remaining behind. So I'm going to pat myself on the back. Also, I want to take this moment to give a shout out to my cousin Chad who's been watching my videos. I appreciate it. Your support means a lot to me. It really does. So thank you. And I'm glad you enjoyed the ice cream. Um, you know, I always love bringing ice cream to family functions. I brought this to Thanksgiving dinner and the family actually liked it so I appreciate that now I'm gonna add about two cups of our pumpkin mixture to this now I did not put this through the uh, food processor and make it into a puree which means that some of the fibers were still in there and a little bit long I did that on purpose I want to make sure that the people who eat my ice cream know that they're eating actual ice cream with actual pumpkin that's important. Now, what I did here is I melted some butter, and the reason for that is because I was going to chop up the caramel, and I needed to make sure that the caramel didn't stick to my knife. Remember what I said about this stuff being super sticky? Yes. So I had to make sure that I kept coating my knife and all my other little uh, utensils with melted butter so that it didn't stick. And you notice that it's still sticking to the parchment paper even though I covered it with butter. Yeah. Now, keep in mind what I did was I actually put this in the refrigerator to get as hard as I could, and I found that it warmed up so quickly, and as soon as it would warm up just a little bit, it was almost impossible to work with because it was so soft. So, I found that even putting it in the freezer helped. My plate I kept in the freezer until I needed it, so it was already cold. And these pieces of caramel I put right on the plate and directly into the freezer because any other way it would have stuck to the plate. So this way I had frozen pieces of caramel that I was pre-froze as I added it to the mixture. Um, this is my beautiful Cuisinart. I need to give a nickname to my Cuisinart ice cream maker so if you have any suggestions let me know. I would love to hear it in the comments. But I have little pieces of caramel. Now I use I would say probably a third of a cup maybe half a cup of the caramel pieces and I made sure to break them up in the smallest pieces that I could um, you know these came straight from the freezer into my ice cream base and they were still hard to work with because they were warming up so fast but that's what it looks like baby and oh this is good stuff this is just amazing ice cream now if you're not eating ice cream for breakfast what's the point of being an adult I love you guys. Thank you so much for your comments, and I appreciate all of you who have subscribed. I broke 500, and it's a big milestone for me, so thank you. So all of you who have been sharing, I appreciate it. Please click like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. You guys are amazing.